Good morning, friends. This is Sergey Kromchenko from Los Angeles, California. It is 6 a.m. right here, right now, and I hope you guys are as awake and as fired up as I am because we're about to learn for loops. So for loops are just an iterators or just an iterator that helps you to loop over things in JavaScript and in many other languages. Particularly, we're gonna work in the JavaScript and I'll show you a couple of examples and I'll walk you through every part of the for loop so you would know where it starts, where it ends, what does it do and what's happening inside of it. Let's get started. All right, so step number one, let's create a new file. So let's run command touch test.js. After we run this command, we see the test.js file will come up and let's start creating data in it. Let's say const friends would be an array. And then in an array, we would say Anna, then we say Anthony, we say Dan, and there should be far as well. Awesome. So right after this one, we let's create a for loop. So how do we create it? If you use Visual Studio Code, just type in word for, and it will give you an option to autofill quite a few loops. Uh, we're just going to go with for this time. Select for and hit enter. So as you can see, we've got autofilled for loop. And that's probably too overwhelming. So let's remove unneeded stuff. So number one, I want to update index to i, as that is the name that people are using most of the time for our index. And now let's go through it. <clears throat> so I'm going to be writing commas here, so you'll remember. So for loop contains four parts. First part is a starting point. That's uh, pretty much where we specify for the computer where we want to start looping from. So this one is our starting point. The second part is our ending point. That uh, we're specifying here, where do we want computer to end running? Ending point. And a third part is our action. But uh, if you're not sure what that is, so I++ is an equivalent of i equals to i plus one. That's exactly the same thing. And I will explain to you all of them in a sec. So, okay, now we've got this information, but how does it work and what does it do? So let's just run it once to understand what is going on. Console log friends square brackets i. So what will it do? Let's run it. Node test.js. Oops, well, there is a bug. Oh, that's right. Uh, we don't know what array is because we have friends. We don't have array. Array was just an autofill from VS Code that we have to replace. I'm going to clear it and run it again. Perfect. So when we ran our code, it console logged every friend, every value of our array right here. So first loop, we had Anna. Second loop, we had Anthony. Third loop, we had Dan. Fourth loop, we had Farah. Now, let's find out what i is. So in the simple words, i is an index. And in array, indexes start from zero. So Anna would have an index, uh, index zero. Anthony would have an index one, then two, far three. So zero, one, two, three. And to prove that, let me console log it. Actually, if you guys ever not sure uh, what things are, just console log them. I gotta console log, console log it in a weird way, possibly for you, because through the comma, you can specify multiple, uh, multiple elements and they will appear in the terminal within one line. I'll show you in a second. So this one, would be also, yep, right there, square brackets i. Okay, so after, yeah, let's run this one now. Okay, so look at this. 
uh, through our first loop i was zero and friends square brackets i was uh, was had a value of anna our second loop i was one and friends i was anthony third loop i was equals to two and our friend's name was um, Dan. And a fourth loop uh, name was Farah, and I was equals to three. So as you see, that's our index. I is our index, and it starts from zero. And if you remember this I++ plus plus or I equals to I plus, plus one. So uh, we're starting from zero. Now it should all slowly start making sense. We're starting from zero and we're looping through. So uh, through our first loop, we go and i is zero. And a friend name would be uh, friends square brackets zero. So that would be Anna. Through our second loop, we go here and is like i, uh, I plus plus. And previously i was zero, but now i, which is zero, equals to zero plus one. And zero plus one is one, so i is one as you can see right here. And friends square brackets one would be Anthony. Then we go through this loop again. Uh, and then we, uh, we check if, if I is um, less than length, and currently it is less, so we're still running. And then I plus plus, which means one plus plus, which would be two. So our i becomes two, right here. And friends square brackets two would be Dan, because Dan has the index of two. And same thing with the, third, uh, with the fourth one, where we have far. Our index become three. So friends.length equals to three. That's exactly what we say. i is less than friends.length. So whenever it becomes uh, becomes not less than uh, friends.length, then our loop ends. That's how, as you remember, that's how we specify our ending point right here. Uh, now let's cancel out a few more things so it would make more sense for you. Friends.length, how about that? And then also, let's cancel out just friends. So you would, you would know what is going on everywhere in this loop. I'm gonna clear it and I'm gonna run it again. So first loop, i equals to zero. And you know what? Let me just do this for your convenience. Okay, now I'm gonna clear it and I'm gonna run it again. So first loop, oh, I get extra space, but whatever. Uh, first loop, i equals to zero. Friends length equals to four. Uh, friends i equals to Anna. And friends equals to our array. Our array uh, of friends will always be the same because we are not making any changes to it. Second loop, i equals to one. Friends length equals to four, which will always be the same because we're, once again, we're not adding any new friends we're not breaking up with any of our old friends, <laughs> if you can say it that way. Uh, friends i equals to Anthony, because friends, once again, friends uh, with the index one, because it's a, it's a second loop, and in programming we start counting from zero. Uh, so our, uh, through the second loop, Anthony would be our friend. Third loop, then fourth, Farah. Uh, yep, this is exactly how uh, for loop works and just to quick uh, just to quickly explain to you this one if you're not familiar with uh, so that is coming pretty much from array so if we have let me comment that out uh, except the first one console.log friends zero can you guess what name will that be I think you already guessed it That'll be Anna. Uh, so we have, if we have any array and we have to pull value, we can pull it by index. And if we put number three, can you guess who will that be? You got it right, that'll be far. So that's a little trick uh, about arrays. 
and this is how for loop uh, works and that's pretty much all that you need to know uh, at the beginning to work with the for loops easy peasy morning squeezy that wasn't difficult right and one of the smartest people that i met in my life said nothing is difficult if you know how to do it and by the way that was me <laughs> regardless uh, you guys just saw an example of uh, of looping with the for loop but we were looping through an array uh, just FYI, you don't have to use for loop to loop through an array. There is a, a newer way and kind of a smarter and easier way to do to do it, and that is for each loop. And that's what we're going to learn during our next lesson. Anyways, if you like this video, give me a big fat thumb up, leave a comment below, and don't forget we have a tele beautiful Telegram channel where you can learn a lot more. Uh, feel free to join that. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below, and I'll see you next time.